I never thought I needed a pair of trekking poles until I was getting ready for my first hike on the Appalachian Trail. I had guessed I would need them on the AT, and I would say that guess was 100% correct. The overwhelming majority of other AT hikers I have seen also were using a pair. So we're going to talk about how trekking poles can help us on the AT and what to look for when we buy a pair. We're also going to talk about the risks of falling as we hike on the AT and how trekking poles can reduce that risk. Before I went to the AT, I had spent decades hiking, camping, backpacking, hunting, and roaming mile after mile over all sorts of terrain. During all that time, I never used a hiking pole, but all it took was a few minutes of looking at a map to understand the AT was going to be different from all that other stuff. I was going to be climbing up really big hills and going down the other side. I was going to be carrying a heavy pack, and I was going to be doing it all the time. They were really big hills, and there was going to be no end to it. All this is combined with the fact my goal was to cover a lot of miles. On all of my AT trips, the poles made going uphill easier and going downhill easier. Even if that benefit did not exist, the poles also had prevented me from falling dozens and dozens of times. That alone is enough reason to make me carry them. The poles help us climb hills when we push down on the poles, and we don't have to push very hard for them to make a noticeable difference. If I put the tip of a pole on a bathroom scale and give it what I consider a slight push, the scale reads 8 to 10 pounds. This is the equivalent of lightening my pack by 8 or 10 pounds. When my daughter and I hiked on the AT, she tried using only one pole and carrying an umbrella with her other hand in the rain. She quickly noticed this required more effort climbing uphill than when she used two poles. A good pair of trekking poles will have a good pair of straps. When I climb, I don't just push down with the handles. I put my wrists through the straps and lean heavily on them. When I do that with my bathroom scale, the scale reads 20 pounds. I know there have been times on rough AT terrain when I have pushed on the poles just about as hard as I could manage. If I had to make a guess, I would say that use of the poles going up AT hills has consistently given me the same advantage of carrying a pack that was 15 pounds lighter. AT hills can be steep, so steep that I often have found myself climbing only on my toes and the balls of my feet. The hills can be equally steep going down. This can put extra stress on our knees. Downhill use of poles can reduce that stress. When the trail has been slippery and muddy, my use of poles when going downhill has kept me walking and not sliding out of control. I have never been a perfect hiker on the AT, but I can tell you about people I have seen that were much better at it than I was. These people would move at a constant 2 miles per hour no matter what. If the trail was flat and smooth and easy, they would move along at what seemed like a pokey 2 miles per hour. But when the train got bad and very steep, they still moved at a constant 2 miles an hour. I was never that good. I thought I had to move faster on flat terrain to make up for the fact I was going slower uphill. If I was walking at 4 miles an hour on flat or slightly downhill terrain, I would sometimes run into a dry gravelly spot in dry weather and it had the same effect as hitting an oil slick. My feet would start to fly out from underneath me and the only thing that could save me was the poles. They prevented many, many falls, but sometimes I went down so fast I wasn't able to use them. I took this photo at a spot where I fell down on the AT. Notice the stick with one end up in the air. When I went down, my head just missed the end of that stick. This is the stick that almost got me. After I took the photo, I broke the stick off and threw it downhill so it couldn't get anybody else. It can be challenging at times to keep our footing on really rocky trail sections. The poles have helped keep me upright there also. Some rocky sections, however, are so bad we have to use our hands to climb. Trekking poles won't be much help there. Good trekking poles can be adjusted for length, so when I hit one of these places, I would shorten the sticks, loop the straps over one arm, and climb up. Another thing we can run into on the AT is places like this, where there is a very steep slope right next to the trail. I always imagined that if I tumbled down one of these slopes, the results would not be pleasant. So I make an extra effort to walk carefully at spots like this. 
Many times I would shorten my poles when going up a steep hill, and I would lengthen them when going down a steep hill. I would usually welcome any opportunity to stop for a breather, so I didn't consider this step much of an inconvenience. Later I found this could be minimized if I used the straps going uphill and the grips downhill, because when I used the straps, my hands would be about four and a half inches lower than compared to using the grips. All of those poles that can be adjusted for length will have either screwing mechanisms or clips that hold the pole in place after we shorten or lengthen it. I believe the main thing to watch for when we buy poles is to be sure we have a pair that will not slowly collapse if we put 20 pounds of weight on them. When this happens, the holding mechanism either isn't strong enough or it cannot be tightened enough. Based on what I've seen, cheap poles often sold in discount stores are the most likely to have this fault. I paid quite a bit of money for a pair of Leckies. I believe they would never collapse and they never did. The grips are easy to hold on to even when wet. The straps have no buckles that would interfere with their use. I wrapped some baseball bat grip on a cheaper pair of poles I have used. When buying a set of poles, one consideration is whether the poles should have an anti-shock feature. This is a spring mechanism that will shorten the pole about a half an inch when we push down on the pole. Based on what I have read, the advantage of anti-shock is it protects our joints if we repeatedly slam the pole into the ground. I cannot speak for others, but I have never routinely slammed a pole into the ground. The pole touches the ground first, then I push on it. If I lost my balance and was about to fall over, then maybe I would jam my pole into the ground. If I did, it was because I wanted the pole to keep me upright at that very instant. I have never felt the need for anti-shock poles, but for those who do, they are widely available. And if I was forced to use a pair of anti-shock poles, I think I would get by fine. They don't have any serious disadvantages. Many trekking poles will have carbide tips that help grip rock. Many manufacturers also produce rubber tips that fit over the carbide tip. And some poles come with baskets to prevent the poles from sinking into mud. Many of the baskets can be removed and put back on at our convenience. On the AT, it was my preference to hike with the rubber tips and without the baskets. Many, if not most, trekking pole tips are held on only by friction. One thing I had to watch out for, though, was if I was on rocky terrain, sometimes the tips would catch on rocks, pull off, and I'd have to go back to find them. This close-up of the bottom of my leckies shows what the rocks on the AT can do to our poles. Since we've been talking about falling, we also should talk about cliffs. There are a number of spots along the AT where we can stand on the edge of a cliff and look far down. Just for the record, I will state the obvious. If we tumble over the edge of a cliff, the odds of us dying are substantial. If we maintain our sense of caution and resist the temptation to stand on the very edge, we should be safe. I would occasionally see a hiker with a wooden hiking staff, the kind of thing I would often see on sale in souvenir shops. These poles have few of the advantages of modern trekking poles, but they do look traditional if anybody cares. Because trekking poles have helped me with virtually every step on the AT, I wouldn't consider using a wooden stick unless I lost my poles and had to improvise. And with that, folks, we are once again done. If you have not yet subscribed, please do so. It would be much appreciated. And as always, thanks for watching.